All right, welcome back everybody. Uh, today, I thought it would be a good idea to go over um, how to set up a tool or a program called Use Galaxy. So if you guys find this video helpful, um, go ahead, like, and subscribe. It'll get the video available or suggested more to people who might be um, looking for this particular thing or who else might find this, find this helpful. If you haven't heard of Use Galaxy in the past, it's an online tool um, that is from a handful of collaborators and we'll go to the page here uh, for um, basically analyzing your data, but more in an interactive way. So let's go to usegalaxy.org. Um, I'll put a link in the description for this site down below, uh, and I'll put a link also to the kind of installation guide um, in the description as well. Some of the things in the installation guide I have found um, to be not complete. So there's a couple other things that uh, you kind of have to keep note of in your mind um, when setting it up. Um, the reason that I wanted to make this video is because some people are not extremely comfortable running from the um, command line. But in here, you can see we have all of the different options on the left-hand side of the different analyses that we can run. So if we wanted to do some kind of assembly, we can come in here uh, and then we can go down and probably find Unicycler. I'm not seeing it, but Spades is, Unicycler uses Spades, um, which we saw in some of that uh, commands. Um, RNA sequencing, we have RNA star, um, just tons of different tools. So Trinity, which is a de novo assembler for RNA sequencing. There's a bunch of these different tools in here and they're all um, interactive. So if we wanna annotate, we can find Proca. And here we can upload our data and our data will show up here on the right hand side and then we can select it. Uh, we can also upload new data, um, but yeah, so we select it and then we can choose all the different options um, here versus typing them into the terminal. Um, the reason why you would want to do it on a local computer versus running it here uh, in your, your browser is that you're limited in things like the amount of storage that you're allowed to have. Um, and we know that running a transcriptome, even a small one with only um, a handful of samples, uh, can have hundreds of gigabytes of data once you're done and over with, right? So running it locally where we have all of the storage that we can really supply the computer to work with, uh, it's a lot better. Another reason why you'd wanna do it locally uh, is that when you're running it on here on the website, you're gonna be, for the lack of a better word, competing with other people who are also running um, some analyses. So you kind of have to wait in a queue in order to get in uh, to have the resources to run um, you're also going to be probably limited in the number of CPUs that you're given um, just to keep it, say, uh, keep it fair for everybody who wants to use this. So this is a free thing to do, um, but you just have to keep in mind that if you're going to run something, chances are it's not going to be as fast as if you're going to do it one in the terminal or two running Galaxy, but local on your own computer. Um, if you don't have a local workstation like I do here, this is just a virtual machine on on my computer and I'll give it 16 cores and 16 gigabytes, so nothing too, nothing too extreme. Um, but if you don't have a workstation, you could try, and if you are at an institution, you could try talking to um, some of the people that are at the cluster, if, you, if your university has a cluster, uh, and see if they are able to install this um, if you don't like the command line interface for running some of the tools. Um, so if we go here, uh, we should be able to see FastQC somewhere. Well, you can also search for them. So let's do FastQC. So here we have FastQC, which is really easy to run from the terminal, but just makes it a little bit easier and it gives you um, information for each of the different inputs as well. Uh, I have tried to install it on Windows. So using the Windows subsystem for Linux, um, but as you can see, I'm running on Ubuntu today. And that's because when I was running it on Windows Subsystem for Linux, I could get it to launch, but I would never actually be able to get an interface like this when um, typing in the URL that it provides, which is just the local host URL. It would never come up on Windows. So I think it has something to do with 
um, how the Windows subsystem for Linux is part, uh, partitioned out from the Windows operating system. Um, so the first thing that we're going to do to get this installed is we're going to create another folder. Oh, we don't have to do it that way. We'll create another folder, new folder, and we'll just call it use Galaxy for now. This is just going to be a place where we're going to download all of the um, information and we're going to install from um, to get that, get that going. So we'll go into it, we'll right click, open in terminal. And then what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to clone the GitHub repository. Uh, and for this, we'll run it first, but you might have to install um, GitHub or the git uh, dash b release underscore 20.09 and then https colon slash slash github.com slash galaxy project slash galaxy dot get I'm expecting an error yep so sudo at install get and then we'll run this yes if we go back to here we should be able to um, shoot 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 galaxy project this guy so on here is the Galaxy project. So if you want to install it locally, um, local install, get Galaxy. So this is kind of the walkthrough that I'm going to be doing today. And I'll put the link to it down in the description. But there's a couple other steps between the clone and the actual running. And then from here um, down, where a little bit more information is going to be needed. So now that we have that downloaded, um, before we actually do what they suggest here is doing the sh run.sh, I noticed that on my bare bones Ubuntu here, I have to run something um, else. So we have to install dist utils. So we have to do sudo um, apt install and then python 3 dash dist dist utils and then we'll do dash y. Um, to signify that yes we do want to continue and it's going to come up with this little window i think there we go and basically this is just saying you really want to do this and if you do want to do this we're gonna to have to restart a couple other things um, in order to get that to go so just go to yes and it should complete without issue after we get that done then we can if we do ls we have it uh, uh, we have to download it now because we had an error with Git. So if you go back up, there we go. Go ahead and start downloading this. Um, on my internet, this will take a while, so I'll fast forward through this. Uh, we only have nine point some megabytes per second. Uh, so I'll fast forward through this and then I'll come back when this is all done. Okay, now we have our um, files downloaded. So we can go into our Galaxy folder and here's everything that was pulled. So we can do ls and then we'll change our directory to be that Galaxy folder. Awesome. Now if we go back here, this is where it says to run the run sh. Um, we can go ahead, copy, and then we'll paste that into here. Um, let's see if I can make this bigger. All right, so we'll go ahead and run this. Um, this also will take a fair amount of time uh, and there's some warnings, but ignoring them still allows the program to run for some reason. So I just ignore all of the errors here unless it's something that's fatal to the, to the installation. If you get some of the errors that I didn't get, I just suggest uh, Googling them and see if there's something that you have to install if it is a fatal installation error, uh, since I don't have experience with them and it seems pretty, pretty easy going, even if there are some warnings here, as long as it doesn't fault out. Uh, like I said, this is going to take a long time, even on the workstation that I have. Uh, so I'll fast forward through all of this and I'll put a time maybe somewhere on the screen to show just how long it takes to install this. That way you can determine whether or not it's something that you want to do, or you just want somebody else on like a cluster to go ahead and do that. So I'll see you in a little bit. 
Okay, so this is as far as I had gotten last time um, and other times with the installation after running the run.sh. And so what we have to do now is after all of these Python errors here, I think there's two, maybe three of them, um, about how something is assigned before it is used. Uh, da, 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 da or is used before it's signed. Um, go ahead and cancel the run. And then what we can do is just run it again. And this time it should give us an address. There we go. So here you can see the address is HTTP colon slash slash localhost 800. So go ahead and open this link. And here we have um, Galaxy, use Galaxy running locally. So we can ha have all of our stuff here on the left hand side. Um, usually there's nothing installed except super basic stuff uh, that is lightweight and can come with Galaxy. Uh, and all the other miscellaneous tools, we'll have to take care of that ourselves. And to do that, we can go ahead and close Galaxy. And then here we'll kill this as well with the Control C. And then we have to go into our config folder. Uh, and then we'll have to copy yml, galaxy.yml.sample, copy paste. And then what I'm going to do is just rename this to galaxy.yml. And on the website, it says to do cp and then uh, this line, we can go ahead and copy this and it should tell us that it's the exact same thing. Right click, paste, enter. Yep. So now they're the exact same file. What we want to do now is go into this galaxy.yml and we need to do control F and then search for admin, admin underscore users. So this line right here. And what this line is going to do is it's going to allow us to set an administrative user that can go in and install and change a bunch of the settings um, for use Galaxy. So we have to uncomment it by removing the um, hashtag or pound sign. And then here you have to type in a username and password that you had signed up for Galaxy on the usegalaxy.org website. So you go to login and register and you register. This is going to be the same um, username or email address that you had signed up with use Galaxy with. I'm going to put in mine. All right. And then we're going to save it. And then um, we'll just minimize it for now, just in case it doesn't work. So this step for me um, sometimes takes a little bit of going back and forth with, for some reason, in order to get that username or that email address recognized as being an administrator. So here we can go up now and rerun the um, run file and I am going to now log. Well, so now what you have to do is um, open the link and then in here you have to register that username. Um, so we'll go register and then here I'm going to type in that same email address. And then the password, just going to use the same password that I had used previously on the Use Galaxy website. And then public name, I'll just do Alex. They have some requirements here, but I'm just going to do um, Alex for the local Use Galaxy instance. And then we'll go create. Don't save for now. Um, but now, so that we signed up with that same username and password that we had used on the Use Galaxy website, or we had signed up with on the Use Galaxy website, and that we had set in the admin user line of the config file, we have this admin button here. If we click that admin button, that's going to allow us to change tons of different stuff on the um, server side. So generally, what you're probably going to want is to install and uninstall tools. So go ahead and click that. And then you have all the different categories. So if we want, I don't know, go to assembly, we'll be able to find some assembly tools. 
Um, let's go ahead and search for oh, big young unicycler. And here we have unicycler. So instead of having to go through and uh, type it all out, what we could do is let's go back to analyze data up here. We'll search for unicycler. And we have this tool. So this is on the used Galaxy website, but if we go back to ours, we can select what version we want. So we probably want to install the latest version. We can install it. What target section do we want to put this in? Um, let's call it bacterial genome assemblers. And then we'll click okay. So now what it's going to do is it's going to go through, you can see in the terminal here, it's going to install that tool. And when it's done, um, it should give us a little bit of information here telling us whether or not it worked. And if we go back to the analyze data page, we should see a new folder called assemblers. We'll head back there. Bacterial genome assemblers, create assemblies with unicycler. So here now locally, so on our local machine, we have the same thing that is on the used Galaxy website. So now we can run this assembler locally uh, and we don't have to compete for resources with other people who are also wanting to use the, the Galaxy um, interface here. Uh, another thing that I had noticed, if we go into this file here, at the very top, there is number of web server worker processes to fork after application is loaded. Um, this has to be set to greater than one. Uh, threads. So how many threads do we want to give it? I have 16 threads uh, total. So if I give it, say, 15, then I have one that should keep the computer still active. So we'll go ahead and save that. If you save anything in this configuration file here, you always have to restart um, this here on the left-hand side. If you close out and go hack, we can go ahead and rerun it. Let me go back up here once it tells us that it's running. Ba, 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 ba. And backtrace. There we go. So now we have our URL, which is the same thing over here. If we refresh it, we should be good to go with 16 threads. So yeah, that's how um, the used Galaxy is installed locally. It's super, super handy if you're gonna be doing some things or if somebody doesn't wanna actually go through and do the terminal, because it can be kind of daunting. Uh, there's all of these tools here. And do star. Go ahead and install this guy, 27A. Um, but yeah, so this is a super useful uh, platform, I should say, uh, that for people who aren't so keen on using the terminal. And as you can see, it's relatively easy to set up. Um, if you're running on a bare bones Ubuntu machine, setting the number of threads is pretty easy, as well as if somebody um, wants to become an admin to have some control over it and then you can don't have to even sign in is one of the options too so if i were to sign or launch this right after setting it up um, then i wouldn't have to create a username and password and i would still be able to go through and run jobs but yeah let me know what you guys think hopefully this is helpful for for somebody thanks for watching